Today I want to introduce a friend of mine. This is Wal Wally. Your German name is Waldemar? Waldemar Leonhard. Leonhard. And I've invited him to come and help us make bread today. The recipe for today is raisin nut bread. And this is the same as the olive bread, except we're going to reduce the olives a little bit and put raisins and nuts, raisins and walnuts into the recipe. And I've invited Wally for a couple of reasons. He's a good friend of mine, but he's also a professional, a retired professional baker. And I thought it would be a lot of fun for you guys to watch how he kneads the bread and listen to some of his advice that he has. That sounds good. If I have advice, I would like to pass it on, but uh, when I don't talk, never mind, just watch what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> That's right. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, what is your baking history? I remember you mentioned that you've worked at Or Wheat. Yeah, I worked at Or Wheat for um, eight years straight and then another three to four years after I interrupted and went in my own business. But uh, I started working as a baker as a child in Germany, uh, learning the bakery trade for a three-year period as an apprentice. And as an apprentice, uh, you don't get paid, but you have to work, work, work like a slave, but you sure learn how to do things. And then afterward, I uh, tried everything else, but I always ended up in the bakery because that's once you have learned something, you always fall back to it. That's my experience. And I worked in bakeries over there in Germany. I worked in bakeries when I came to this country in, uh, by Minneapolis in Rockford, Minnesota. Uh, then I went to California and uh, after working in small retail bakeries, I ended up in Oroweed and worked there. Uh, quite a few years. I got my own donut shop and then I quit Oroweed for about a year and a half and then I went back again to Oroweed and went back in another donut shop experience and later on I moved to Nebraska. I had my own restaurant there after I worked in a small retail bakery there first for a couple of years and in my restaurant I made my own pastries and all good things which people like to eat for dessert and so on. And uh, from there I went to uh, back to Minnesota and worked in a wholesale bakery over there for a Wholesome Bakery. And uh, when they closed up because of uh, whatever reasons, that wasn't my that wasn't my reason. That it was other <laughs> other situations. But uh, they closed the bakery in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and I went to work for Baldinger Bakery, where I retired from. I worked for them for 14 years, mostly as dough mixer, at times as a supervisor, and I worked the oven and everything else. So the experience I had as a baker carried me all my life and made me a good living. And now we have to get started, I guess. Yeah. I see Jean, she got everything ready. So how do we start? Put the flour in here. It's already measured out. We got 10 cups of flour. And uh, we got salt. I didn't measure it, but it looks like a couple of tablespoons. Yeah, yes. Four teaspoons. Four teaspoons. So I was just about right. And this is here the yeast. Yeast doesn't get in with the flour and salt because the salt uh, eats up the yeast, so we put it in last. You put the raisins in. I see you got about uh, two cups. Two cups of raisins here. Did you count them? No. You didn't? Well, I just counted them. There's uh, 789 raisins in there. If you don't <laughs> believe it, you can check it. <laughs> There's two cups of nuts. Okay. Okay, the, before uh, anybody works with food, the general rule is wash your hands. Okay, that's what I'm going to do first. Get, a good, get the salt, especially the salt that makes them good. And also the raisins and the nuts. 
Okay, now we're preparing the liquid. There is a, about a cup of olives. They're pitted because they're going to be grated up. And there is about a, a half a cup of date sugar and uh, the same amount of flaxseed. Oh, all the good things. And uh, then comes the water. Mix the, uh, the bread with high speed machines. Mm -hmm. So they heat the bread, they don't heat it up pretty quickly. Now we mix it by hand. I think the water should be a little warmer than 75. Let's go for 80. I brought this along here, I thought it might help. Yeah. The water temperature, I took about 80 degrees. With a machine mix, it shouldn't be that warm. It should be a little bit cooler, about 72 to 75, because the machine creates, you know, when the dough mixes faster, it gets warm faster. Mm -hmm. So here we are, by hand mixing it, we can afford to have the water a little warmer. And then we start it up, everything in there. But if the water is too cold, it just takes that much longer to rise. And uh, if it's too warm, of course, it can kill the yeast too. But it takes more heat than just 80 or 90 degrees. But uh, it, uh, it raises faster. And uh, it's reliable, high. Very good job. <laughs> okay, now let me check the temperature on that. I haven't done this for a while and I just want to make sure you don't have it too hot. So that came up to about 85 degrees. That seems to be a good temperature. Okay, and then I just put all, all the water in all at once, right? Mm. Let me see if it mixed in good. Yep. Have it up. And then I put the yeast in it. I kind of sprinkled the yeast all over. Okay, now we had the dry mix and the liquid on top with the yeast sprinkled on it. At about 20 minutes we waited for it to come fully to a fermentation and then now I'm going to start mixing it. I have to remember now, when I was an apprentice, that I was a young man with 16 years old, and now I'm 80, so I forgot how I did that in that time. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things you don't forget, I guess so. When I mix it, I usually go with my fingers to it. It's soft enough, so the fingers kind of help to give the to mix it thoroughly. It gives you a feeling of that you get everything mixed in perfect. And when you mix dough. You always mix from the outside to the inside. So nothing is going to stay unmixed. And I also use my, the ball of my hands to work into it. So I mix it for about, well, so far maybe two minutes. The longer you mix, 
a dog, the more you develop the gluten in the flour. And the gluten is what gives you the texture in the bread. So that's why we use whole wheat flour instead of white flour. Whole wheat flour has supposed to have all the gluten in it that the bran and the corn gives us the corn the, what is it the wheat in Germany you when you call corn that's uh, all the varieties of grain except the corn mm. so it's a general term for grain yeah we are uh, calling the what you call corn over here we call it mice like in Spanish maize. Mm -hmm. so I think it's mixed good enough. How, about how long a time did it take? Three minutes? I think so. Three or four minutes? Yeah. So it all depends how hard you work on a dough. That's as long as you should mix it. If you're not sure, mix it five minutes and that should do it. But the dough is, by develop, developing the gluten, the dough is stiffening up. And that's what I want to see. Okay, I'll just ball the dough up right in the middle here. We cover it up. And leave it sit. Let's see, in about 30 minutes. After a good half an hour, the dough is risen. When I put my finger on it and the fingerprint stays down and doesn't come back, the dough has risen about as high as it will get. Uh, I will knock the air out for once and then let it rest for another 10 minutes and then we are going to make the loaves. Looks good. All right, now we are ready to make the bread. I sprinkled some of the flour, the whole wheat flour we got here, on the bottom of the pans, so we don't use any oil. So the bread won't stick to the bottom. That should do it. And uh, then I put the dough here on the table. Cut it up in pieces and make three loaves of bread. That's more than three loaves here. Well, let's try one. That's bigger here. Let's split that up. I think... Yeah, the dough's pretty stiff. We are working out the, all the air out of the bread to make it, uh, to round it up, then we can make, shape the loaf out of it. When you do this, you use your ball of your hands. You can do it one at a time, like here I got one. But I used the, the ball of the hand to really go inside the, the, the loaf. And that will round, round it up really nice, neatly. I try to make them out even, but it doesn't look perfect here. 
I think it's pretty good. Put a piece here and take a piece of that. Now we make it right. Okay, that's the way you round up bread. And if you want to make it, make it work a little easier, you leave it sit for a moment, but I don't think we have to. The dough is very flexible, very pliable. I'm closing the seam with the bottom of my hand and there we got a loaf right here and then I roll that in flour so it won't stick to the edges either. Perfect. By, by making the the loaf like this, I avoid to get any dry flour in there. That's the, for the purpose not to get any holes in there. Dry flour creates holes in the bread. We always used to say that when we get to those holes that the mice were in it. <laughs> but really it's only either oil or flour. Can get it too long, just fold it in further. The seam is closed. There's number three. And that's ready to prove now. We leave the loaf sitting here for about five minutes to give it a head start to uh, to rice and then we put it in the oven and that's it it took us about five minutes, five minutes and has a lot of kick to it okay and then we are ready to bake it the temperature I'm baking is at 350 but uh, everybody has different stoves and ovens they uh, you might bake a little different temperature. So it's a, everybody's experience. But this is a fairly new oven by Maytag. And at 350 it bakes really good. We check it out in about 50 minutes. And that might take another 10 minutes, 60 minutes. So I would say 60 minutes, all depends on the loaf size. Could be 65 minutes or 55 minutes. So some pans they bake faster too. I think when you use glass pans, they bake faster. Okay, here we are. You get a hollow sound when you do that. And that's when it's done. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah, this stuff. There we go. Now we got three loaves of bread. I would say to weigh about a uh, pound and a half. Doesn't matter. 
But this is it. That's the result. Thank you for listening. And you've written a book? Yes, I did. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the baking process that I came from Germany and learned the baking trade over there. I was born in uh, Silesia, which is Polish now. And I went through the uh, time, the Hitler time, the Nazi time, as well as, uh, as a Hitler youth in uh, during World War II. And uh, had all the experiences which uh, impressed my life. Some of it for the good, much of it for the bad. And uh, as I became more and more aware of the uh, of my relationship to an eternal being of the God who I was told that uh, if you're a good kid you get a candy but if you're a bad kid you go to hell. So I learned to know this God and uh, I wrote about this in this book right here, The War Within. It uh, tells all about it, what my struggles were what the war was within me before I finally got to know that God is a God of love. And uh, I really can highly uh, uh, recommend this book for anybody to read it. It's a, a true life story. It's not uh, fiction. I'm very honest about things and uh, just said things the way they really uh, impressed me, the way I reacted on it. and. Uh, that I'm here yet today is by the grace of God. And this is what I wrote down in this book. Thank you.